Hey everybody, I hope everyone is doing well today. So today is the video for Thursday, October 29th. And for today, what I'm going to be talking about is the workshop for structure of the CTA. And that is a review of the structure of the CTA and also how to write the CTA. And the weekend for, or the homework for this weekend is to continue drafting, reading, and revising your outline and continue drafting because next week, Thursday, is when the CTA draft will be due and the final draft of the CTA will be due on Thursday, November 12th. So you can find the link for today's lesson right in our course schedule. And I can also show you where to find it on our Blackboard page. But just as a sort of reminder, our online course schedule can be found right under the syllabus and course schedule tab. Now the lesson I'll be going over today will be located as well under lessons and under the CTA steps and structure review. So what you want to do again is take a position. Your position is the claim that you're making. You'll support your claim with ideas and details from your topic cluster. Now the claim made in one of the sample papers is the practice of photoshopping is the underlying evil that distorts body image for both men and women. Now your claim should not be a fact or be an irrefutable statement of belief or be an unsupportable opinion. Therefore, your claim should be a refutable opinion that you can support using the texts or the sources from your topic cluster. Now what you want to do from there is support your claim through connected reasons. The reasons you nod to in your thesis statement are the backbone of your argument. Per our text, your claim must be supported by reasons that your audience will accept. A reason can likely be linked can usually be linked to a claim of the word because. So for example, America's anti-pollution efforts should focus on privately owned cars because it would allow most citizens to contribute to national efforts and care about the outcome. Now what you wanna do is support the claim through connected reasons and you wanna use this organizational structure to represent your claim and your three major reasons for your claim. So your claim or thesis statement should be supported by three main reasons. Now what you want to do from there is make sure your reasons are supportable. You want to double check those reasons. Your goal is to use topic cluster text or sources to support your claim. So be sure your reasons are rooted in the text or the sources. So for each major reason, can you refer to specific points from one or more texts that you can use to support that reason? Is each major reason supportable by the text at hand? So the sample claim here is, I think rec recreational marijuana should be legalized because it has been successfully legalized in a few states. Studies demonstrating pot's dangers have come up empty. And it, now the supporting reason it makes ice cream taste better is not supportable and it's not a fact. And it can't be supported by text or research at hand. So what you wanna do from there is to qualify your thesis your thesis, that is, claim or reasons may feel impersonal or may even run contrary to where you stand on the issue. Likewise, your thesis might not keep your text in mind. So, for example, the following thesis does not reflect the author's actual values on the issue of animal rights, nor does it reference the nature of the evidence to be used. So, to ensure that multiple stances are indicated in your argument, you want to work to qualify your thesis and include reference to your text. So, for entrance. For instance, although any form of cruelty runs contrary to my own beliefs, several texts demonstrate how some forms of animal use and abuse play a logical part in people's need to survive, learn, and enact cultural norms. So what you want to do is update your argument structure and make sure you have a claim at the thesis statement, a qualification, and a reason one, reason two, and reason three. So in order to do that, you have to provide evidence for your reasons reasons. After you've read the text in your topic cluster and identified important points that you want and need to introduce within your argument, consider how to organize them. How are you planning to organize and categorize these points in relation to each other? Would it make sense to address the commonly held beliefs 
would it then make sense to discuss new paradigms addressed in those texts? So this is an, an example of providing evidence for your reasons. If you haven't yet organized the important point, points into about eight or so categories, you want to do that now. Now here's how you might represent this. And the, the topic for this is for gender exploration as sexual assault prevention. And the different categories are women as victims, women as objects, thinking critically about gender, society and US in general, the rhetoric and gender roles, the role of institutions, men as perpetrators and victims, and the erasure of men. Now, how you want to consider to organize these into your argument is to have the claim, qualification, reason one, reason two, and reason three, and then the subpoints. So the subpoints that the student chose was women as victims, rhetoric of gender, men as perpetrators. They grouped that under reason one. And then for reason two, they chose to Take the erasure of men, men as victims, objectification, and institutions and society. So for a review of structure, there are two methods to organize and outline the CTA, such as using the block method or the point by point method. If you need a review of these methods, you can click on this link. And this will take you to a handout from the Ashford University Writing Center and it shows how to use the block method and also the point by point method, two methods that we reviewed last week and from our discussion board last week as well. So here are the CTA links. So if you need the links to the CTA guidelines, the cluster topics, the sample paper and the CTA invention, you can find that right in our lesson here. Anyway, that is it for today. I hope you all have a great day and a wonderful weekend. Now, if you need extra help, feel free to stop in during my office hours tomorrow. I have office hours on Fridays from 3 to 5 p.m. or you can email me. Thank you and have a great day.